Welcome to the sixth episode of Make Pro Wrestling Majestic Again. I am Tiger Height. And I am the gallery of many peanuts, and, and I am still champion. the champion of the world. So, um, for the people who are going to be listening on iTunes and Spotify and all of that, we are actually going to be doing this live on YouTube. Yes, we are. Um, so, if you're watching, if you're listening to this, you missed it live, but... Uh, what we're going to be doing is something incredibly unique uh, because there are no shows and we need a break from doing our regular segments. We are going to be reading line from line the uh, booking contract for Stephanie McMahon Levesque as a performer. Uh, this was 2013. The, yep. link, the link to the actual document will be in the description. And this is all legal. We did not get this from any nefarious means. This is straight from the Securities and Exchange Commission. They have to put yep. this out. Um, I believe they have to do it for anyone who has shares within the company. Yes. So presumably also um, Triple H or Triple, Paul Levesque yep. would have his contract up there. Um, Vincent McMahon will have his contract up there. Um, but what makes this unique is this is a performer's contract. Contract. So, uh, uh, presumably, Stephanie McMahon is under multiple contracts with this company. Not only is she... <laughs> That's kind of cool. Not only is she a <laughs> promoter, um, or not a... Well, she is a promoter. Uh, so, she has a, a contract to be a promoter, but she also has a performer contract, and she probably also has an executive contract because she is also an executive within the company right. as well. And I was... I was so... Trying, so, the, here's the thing. I was trying to find a... More recent one. I was trying to find a more recent version of this. I was not able to find it. But I found a couple of other documents that we might revisit later, um, especially when it regards to right. new investors' contract. I did find that, and also like how much each investor was making and their actual title. Right, like that was all there. Oh my god! I swear to Christ. There is one thing. as like NHL. I love them, but for crying out loud, they just spam you with fucking notifications if you don't turn them the fuck off. But, well, so Stanley Cup playoff. So right there well, we go. People are gonna have to deal with it anyway. So without further ado, uh, let us um, let's kick off on it. Um, uh, yeah, Peanut Gallery will start. Um, once again, if you want to read along with us, the link to it will be in the description of wherever you're listening in on. So right. go ahead, Peanut Gallery, work your magic. All right. World Wrestling Entertainment, Inc. Booking contract agreement is made effective as of October 7th, 2013, effective date by and between. World Wrestling Entertainment, Inc., a Delaware corporation with its principal paid place of business at 1241 East Main Street, Tamford, Connecticut, 06902. Here and after referred to as promoter and Stephanie McMahon Levesque with a business address CO. 1241 East Main Street, Sanford, Connecticut, 06902, here referred to as wrestler. So, essentially, that's the intro. Oh, uh, she is a wrestler. This is a wrestler contract. This is a, this is a wrestling contract. Right, so promoter's going to be WWE, and then when they refer to wrestler, they're referring to Stephanie McMahon. Right. So, let us move on to premise. Premises. Whereas promoter is duly licensed as required to conduct professional wrestling exhibitions and is actively engaged in the business throughout the world of organizing, publicizing, arranging, staging, conducting professional wrestling exhibitions and or events as defined below and representing professional wrestlers in the promotion and exploitation of a professional wrestler's name, likeness, personality, and whereas promoter has established a worldwide network of television stations which regularly broadcast promoters wrestling programs for the purpose is of pro publicizing promoter professional wrestling exhibitions and or events as defined below and promoter has established a network of cable satellite internet organizations which regularly broadcast transmit stream and exhibit promoters professional wrestling events on a pay-per-view and subscription basis in addition thereto promoter has developed and produced another television program Programs, which are also used to publicize, publicize, display, promote promoters' professional wrestling exhibitions. And whereas promoters' business operations afford wrestler opportunities to wrestle and obtain public exposure, which will increase the value of her wrestling services God. and her standing in the professional <laughs> wrestling community and entertainment industry. And whereas wrestler is duly licensed as required to engage in professional wrestling exhibitions and or events as defined below and is actually engaged in the business of performing as a professional wrestler and whereas wrestler is performing art, 
artist and the professional wrestling exhibitions arranged by promoter consul constitute demonstrations of wrestling skills and abilities designed to provide athletic styled entertainment to the public such as professional wrestling exhibitions and events constitute entertainment and are not competitive sports and whereas wrestler desires promoter to arrange professional wrestling exhibitions and or events as defined below for wrestler and to assist wrestler in obtaining public exposure through live exhibitions, television programs, public appearances, and merchandising activities or otherwise. Now, therefore, in consideration of the mutual promises and agreements are set forth herein for other good and valuable consideration, the receipt and sufficiency of which are hereby acknowledged, the parties intending to be legally bound do hereby agree as follows. So that was just the introduction. Right. That's just essentially saying you are going to wrestle. Um, we get all the television licensing agreement, blah, blah, blah. We put it all you, together, but you agree to do this in exchange for us doing this. Right. We're paying you, that's, but you also get the exposure and the credibility as being a right. uh, performer. That's, yeah. So, I mean, that's, a, that's pretty much legal jargon. I mean, if you have read any performers, artists, any contract like that, it pretty much says. If you looked at any of them. I mean, I, I was trying to get one of my friends who's actually a um, contract lawyer on here, but he was busy doing stuff. Ah, so fun. <laughs> so let's let's go into number one booking. booking go ahead wrestler hereby grants exclusively to promoter and promoter hereby accepts the following worldwide rights this is where it's going to get really interesting also keep in mind i will be reading i'll be reading the next section we're going to during be the term the exclusive worldwide rights to wrestler services appearances and our performance in the entertainment industry Without limiting the generality of the foregoing, such worldwide, worldwide rights shall include, without limitation, the right to engage wrestler services, appearances, and or performances in, one, those professional wrestling matches designated by a promoter and whose other events, engagement, appearances, filmings, photography, shoots, autograph signings, and other business and charitable, ev charitable events designated by WWE relating to professional wrestling or sports entertainment whether or not staged before a live audience in a television broadcast studio on location or otherwise collectively the events. And two, in all other events, engagement, appearances, filmings, photography, shoots, autograph signings, and other business and charitable events that are not related to professional wrestling or sports entertainment in connection with movies, films, commercials, product endorsements, videos, television, programs, radio, magazines, books, theater, internet, or any other media in the entertainment industry, collectively other appearances. This, I think, is where their third party thing comes in. Right. This, I think, is where it's extending to that, um, uh, when they did that ban on uh, OnlyFans and Twitch and stuff like that. Right. This is where it runs into a problem. Pursuant to section 13.5 herein and during the terms of this agreement, wrestler acknowledges and agrees that promoter in his sole, dis sole discretion will have the right to assign wrestlers' obligations under this agreement for any period of time as promoter sees fit to other promoters in order to enhance or improve wrestlers' overall wrestling abilities, entering skills, conditioning, or other attributes deemed necessary by promoters. So this is where the WWE can essentially say, hey, if, if we're going to... We have control over where you go right. um, as far as wrestling goes, and you can go to other brands... At our discretion, of course, to right. essentially, you know, train or whatever. Right. During the term and thereafter as provided for this agreement, the right to sell or otherwise distribute tickets of admission to the general public for viewing of any or all events that include the performance or appearance of the wrestler as well as the right to exhibit, broadcast, and transmit the footage as defined in Section 2.1 via closed-circuit transmission, pay-per-view transmission, subscription transmission, video-on-demand uh, transmission, video exhibition, or any other medium now known or hereafter discovered. During the term of this agreement and thereafter, as provided for in this agreement, the right to solicit, negotiate, and enter into a agreements on behalf of the wrestler for the exploitation of wrestler intellectual property, as defined here and below, through any means whatsoever, including internet websites, merchandising, commercial tie-ups, publishing, personal appearances, performance in non-wrestling events, and endorsement. 
In consideration of the wrestler granting of rights, license, and other services as set forth herein, and provided the wrestler faithfully and dutifully performs all the obligations, here under promoter shall endeavor to book wrestler as an individual or a member of group, which determination shall be made in promoter's sole discretion in wrestling matches and at various events. All right. Well, don't get used to this. You won't see these for too long. All right. So... Um, under the second part of the section, yep. let me uh, let me scroll down so you guys either can take a look at it there or um, link will be in the description as well for the for full works. document. Right. Works. works. Wrestler hereby grants to promoter that excludes rights, the exclusive right during the term to videotape, film, photograph, and otherwise record or to authorize others to do so by any media now or here here and after discovered wrestlers appearances performance commentary and any other work for the related to the for or related to the events or for or related to any and all other service in, of the services performed by wrestler um pursuit pursuit, pursuit okay i was right um to the terms heron 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 i was close um, I'm obviously not the strongest of readers in the world. <laughs> well, you can have me read the whole contract. Are I'm, you sure you want to? Yeah, I can do that. All right, whatever. That's fine. Yeah. I just didn't want to sit here these and have you read the whole these thing. These recordings by tape, film, photograph, disc, or otherwise collectively referred to herein as the footage. I'm clearly not a fucking Rhodes Scholar here. That's why I do wrestling commentary for a living. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the beautiful one of the two of right. us. Well, you can provide, provide a ton of commentary for this then. This is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, notwithstanding the termination of this agreement for any reason, notwithstanding any other provision of the agreement, the promoter shall have the right to produce, reproduce, reissue, manipulate, reconfigure, license, manufacture, record, perform, exhibit, broadcast, or otherwise disseminate the footage in perpetuity uh, by any form of media now or hereafter device, including without limitation free cable, pay cable, closed circuit, and pay-per-view television, the internet video on demand, and subscription video on demand. So basically, it's more of a breakdown of, oh, um, all the videotape footage, the pay-per-view stuff, and all of that, even though you are physically in the video itself, right. we own that taping. Right. Um, essentially. They, they own the tapes that you're performing in, so right. you can't use any of their tapings outside, uh, with, you know, outside without, without, without their explicit permission, permission right. from them. Right. Wrestlers' appearance, performance, and work product in connection to, in any way to the events, footage, wrestler services, and the rights to... Uh, granted herein shall be deemed work for hire, notwithstanding the termination of this agreement. Promoter work shall for hire. own Fuck you. in perpetuity <laughs> all footage and all of the rights, results, products, and proceeds in and to derive from the events, footage, wrestler services, and the rights granted herein, including without limitation all incidents, dialogue, characters, actions, routines, ideas, gags, costumes, or parts of costumes, accessories, crowns, inventions, championship title or other belts of applicable and any other tangible or intangible materials written composed submitted added improvised or created by and for the wrestler in connection with the events footage wrestler services and the rights granted herein wait so do they does that essentially mean that they own like the wrestler's gear and shit yeah mm -hmm. But and we've but we see that on like other places. Like, how the fuck are you supposed to own pants? Like, what? <laughs> they own the they own the particular designs. <laughs> and promoter may obtain copyright and or trademark and or any other legal protection, therefore not known or hereafter discovered, in the name of the promoter or on behalf of the promoter's designee. If a promoter directs a wrestler either either singly or in conjunction with promoter to create, design, develop any copyrightable work herein referred to as development, such development shall be deemed work for hire, and the promoter shall own such development. What? <laughs> All footage and We own your development. That's right. They they own like the, the works. They own the copyrightable works. So like if you so if a wrestler goes in and creates a costume in conjunction with the WWE, the WWE will own that costume. Okay okay. All footage and developments referred to in this agreements are collectively referred to as works. All works and wrestlers' contributions 
Here, there too, shall be solely and exclusively to promoter in perpetuity, notwithstanding any termination of this agreement. My God. To the extent that <laughs> such works are considered contributions they're to making, collective they're, works. They're making, they're making sure that their shit's covered. A, comp, a compilation, a supplementary work, and or as part of a component of a motion picture or other video uh, audiovisual work, the parties hereby expressly agree that the work shall be considered works made for hire under the Copyright Act of 1976 as amended. In accordance therewith, all rights and the works shall belong exclusively to the promoter in perpetuity, notwithstanding any termination to this agreement, to the extent which, which works are deemed other works, such as works other than works made for hire, wrestler hereby irrevocably assigns in perpetuity to promoter all rights, title, and interest to, and all rights in such works and all renewals and extensions of the copyrights or other rights may be secured under the laws or hereafter in force and in effect of the United States of America or any other country or countries. So essentially what that meant was any kind of footage, the wrestler cannot go back because any Any in costume it. that is made the uh, in conjunction with the WWE is owned by the WWE. In, and, in you can, and, and you cannot revoke that specific costume mm -hmm. or videotape library gags. Right. Uh, any physical thing, so like championships or anything like that. Essentially, WWE owns what each competitor is wearing, including yep. fucking black jeans and a t-shirt. Right. So I wonder. I wonder if this is more so for like merch. Well, actually, there is a part for merchandise. There is a so part I'm for jumping. merchandise. Right. Anyways, we're gonna get. We're, to not, the we're not even merchandising like at all. We are going to get really spicy here and go into intellectual property. Oh God, this one actually might start to irritate me a little bit. All service marks, trademarks, other distinctive and identifying. In Indicia used by wrestler prior. Indicia. Wow. What a what a fucking prior word. Prior to the effective date in connection with the business of professional wrestling. So um, also essentially they are, uh, they so essentially any any kind of logo or anything like that unless the wrestler has owned it before, like AJ Styles and Ricochet is owned almost immediately by WWE. Right. So including, but not limited to, the wrestler's legal name. What? <laughs> <laughs> they own their legal name. Uh, apparently, the promoter owns the legal name of the wrestler. They own you, essentially. Why would anybody sign this? Uh, nickname, ring name, likeness, personality, character, caricatures, signatures... Signature, costumes, props, gimmicks, gestures, routines, and themes which are owned by the wrestler or which in which the wrestler has any rights anywhere to the world, collectively the wrestler intellectual property, as described and identified in Exhibit A and attached here to incorporate therein by reference. Wrestler hereby assigns the promoter the rights to, uh, during the term and thereafter provided for in this agreement, including any sell-off period set forth in Section 4.3 by promoter in Hereby accept all worldwide rights, title, and interest to wrestlers' intellectual property, including, but not limited to, the rights to license, reproduce, manipulate, promote, expose, exploit, or otherwise use the wrestler intellectual property. Okay, so the, essentially it's kind of what I said before with like the AJ Styles P1 thing. Um, when they sign this contract, essentially, uh, WWE can use that contract, uh, use that not by selling it, but they can manipulate it and put other things around it right. to change it. Right. And then that's when WWE can use the logo, logo right. legally. Exactly. Right. Okay. I see what they're doing Wrestler here. further acknowledges and agrees that promoters shall own in perpetuity all footage, as defined in Section 2.1 of the agreement, that promoters shall have perpetuity shall have rights to use uh, the, hold on. Okay, that promoter shall have perpetual rights in the footage as set forth in section 2.2 of this agreement and that three upon completion of the term, promoter shall have continued right to use the wrestler's intellectual property in connection with the promoter's exploitation of the footage or any other copyrighted works right. that incorporates the wrestler's intellectual right. property. Right, that makes sense. So if AJ Styles leaves, they can still use the stuff they with AJ use, Styles yeah. and have the logos in there without any problem. That's exactly. literally, is, in, in any better sense of the word, that's exactly what I just said. Exactly.
Right. Um, which uh, includes, by way of example and not limitation, promoters' use in marketing, publicity, publicity, advertising, distribution, licensing, and or broadcast of the footage or any other such copyrighted work that incorporates the wrestler's intellectual property. Okay, I, I see what that thing was saying. It's like, it sounded kind of weird, but now I understand what they're doing. The intellectual property, essentially, if the wrestler's legal name is there and they use their legal name as their ring name, WWE can use it and continue to promote with it, um, but they don't technically own it. Right, they don't it's, own it. You, they just get automatic okay licensing agreement to use it. Right. right. Except for the wrestler intellectual property specifically set forth in the previous paragraph, any intellectual property rights including but lim not limited to trademarks, service marks, copyrighted marks, and or distinctive and identifying indicia, including legal name, ring name, nickname, likeness, personality, <laughs> character, characters, signatures, props, gestures, routines, themes, incidents, dialogues, actions, gags, costumes, or parts of costumes, accessories, crowns, inventions, championship, title, or other belts of applicable and any other items of tangible <laughs> or intangible property written, composed, submitted, added, improvised, created, and or used in association with the wrestler's performance in the business of professional wrestling or sports entertainment, which were procured, owned, and created by promoter during the term, or which were procured, owned, or created by promoter prior to the term, which are described and identified in Exhibit B attached here too, and incorporated herein by reference, collect Collectively, the promoter intellectual property shall belong to promoter in perpetuity with promoter retaining all such ownership rights exclusively throughout the world, notwithstanding any termination. Of now, now, okay, I just want to make sure that everyone is keeping in mind right now as well that this is Stephanie McMahon's contract right. um, as her being a performance wrestler. Uh, she's not going to be leaving, but Stephanie McMahon's name is Stephanie McMahon Levesque. Right, so, so she can use her name because she owns her legal name. Right, you can't, you cannot trademark your own legal name. But this is essentially saying if Stephanie McMahon leaves for any reason, um, then WWE can still use that footage, no problem. Right. Uh, <sighs> The f oh, that was you. That I was thought, me. I thought that was something else. <laughs> it promoter may from time to time during the term create or develop trademark service marks and or distinctive and identifying indicia including ring name, nickname, likeness, personality, character, character, signatures, props, gestures, happen. routines, themes, incidents, dialogue, actions, gags, costumes, or parts of costumes, accessories, crowns, inventions, championship, title, or other belts if applicable, and any other items of tangible or intangible property written, composed, submitted, added, improvised, created, and or used by or associated with wrestlers' performance in the business of professional wrestling or sports entertainment, which wrestler acknowledges shall belong to, to promoter in perpetuity, with promoter retaining all such ownership rights exclusively throughout the world, notwithstanding any termination of this agreement. In addition, wrestler agrees to assign and relinquish to promoter any and all claims of ownership and right. or goodwill that will be acquired by wrestler now in the future to and from such character name and image. With respect to any of the foregoing, wrestler agrees to immediately execute an amendment to this agreement and add to exhibit B any additional intellectual property rights created to pursuant of 3-3 in this such as such as promoter intellectual property. You doing good? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so it, it basically it's just more of that legal jargon of um, you are relinquishing your right to use the footage, and you cannot come back at us later to claim this footage. Right. All right. 3.4, wrestler intellectual property and promoter intellectual property are here and after collectively referred, referred to as, as intellectual, intellectual property. property. I don't think that was entirely necessary to put in there, but we'll just roll with it. Well, they have to if they're saying intellectual property. Well, then why wasn't that 3.1? Wrestler agrees to cooperate fully in good faith with promoter for the purpose of securing, per, preserving promoter rights to the intellectual property in connection here with wrestler acknowledges and hereby grants promoter the exclusive worldwide right during the term of this agreement with respect to wrestler intellectual property and in perpetuity with respect to promoter intellectual property to apply for and obtain trademark service marks, copyrights, or another registration throughout the world in promoter's name and or on behalf of promoter's designee and to enforce any of all any and all of promoter's rights therein. Promoter's expense and request promoter and wrestler shall take such steps as a promoter deems necessary for any registration or any litigation 
uh, or other proceeding to protect and enforce any and all of promoters' rights in the wrestler intellectual property and promoter uh, and or promoter intellectual property and or works. Further, wrestler authorizes promoter to execute any documents on his or her behalf that are required by the U.S. Patent Trademark Office in order to protect the aforementioned intellectual property. All right. So basically saying that, I mean, in one more sense of the word, it is um, referring to the footage that WWE and the thing have the agreement that the intellectual property, like the footage, the costumes, the gags, blah, 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 are called intellectual property, and it's making a clear definition of what intellectual property and who is. owns it when. So the wrestler right. will own the intellectual property during the term of the agreement, but the promoter has the rights to that same property in perpetuity. Right. So after the agreement. Right. Right. So section four merchandising wrestler hereby agrees that promoter shall have exclusive right in perpetuity to use and exploit wrestler intellectual property in connection with the manufacture, production, reproduction, reissuance, manipulation, reconfiguration, distribution, sale, and other commercial exploitation in any matter now known or hereinafter discovered of any and all copyrighted work incorporating the wrestler intellectual property. Promoter shall own in perpetuity all copyrights in such copyrighted work, and promoter shall be entitled to obtain copyright registrations in the promoter's name or on behalf of its designee. Wrestler shall provide reasonable assistance to promoter in so obtaining such copyright registrations, and wrestler authorizes promoter to execute any documents on wrestler's behalf as attorney in fact that are required by the U.S. Copyright Office. So if WWE gives you a name, you basically give them permission to execute the uh, legal ramifications like the copyright things for those documents. Right. Or, 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 know, or for, for the that clothing. Name. Right. Right. So uh, essentially, it, it's WWE being able to uh, say, for example, they can still sell uh, Dean Ambrose shirts. Right. If they wanted to. You don't, if they you don't, you don't, to. You don't particularly see that, but it's more of like it's an option thing. Right. Um, or, uh, or, or like uh, maybe a, a good a example Funko. of this. Right. A good example of this is like um, a vintage t shirt, like Macho Man Randy Savage. Right. Obviously, Randy Savage is not with the WWE right now, but they can still use his likeness, logo, and nickname because he signed probably something really similar to what we're reading. Right. So in addition to the perpetual rights to use and exploit wrestler intellectual property as set forth in section 4.1, Wrestler agrees that during the term in any applicable sell-off period as provided for in this agreement, promoter shall have the exclusive rights to use, exploit, and license the wrestler intellectual property in connection with the manufacture, reproduction, uh, reissuance, distribution, sale, and other commercial exploitation in any matter now known or here and after discover of goods and merchandise incorporating the wrestler's intellectual property. Uh, so... That pretty much, yeah. Pretty much the same thing, um, other than like sell-off period. But they're actually going to be defining that. Did you need like a break or something? Oh, I might. I um, mean, that's totally fine if you. That's totally fine if you want to take like a minute. It's totally yeah. cool. Um, I can, I can, I can continue forward here. <clears throat> okay. Sell-off period. You have, you have wine. You haven't touched. So, it. um, so this is after, like, this is during the nine-day non-compete, for example. It's right. Sell-off period. So upon the expiration or termination of this agreement, promoter shall have the right to sell any goods and merchandise and inventory on hand or manufactured containing wrestler intellectual property for 90 days immediately following the expiration of or, or termination of sell-off period provided. However, there shall be no restriction on promoter's rights to use or exploit wrestler intellectual property in connection with the perpetual rights granted herein by wrestler and two with respect to goods merchandise and a programming that include the wrestler intellectual property regarding which promoter has made a material time resources and or financial investment prior to expiration or termination of this agreement and which have a commercial life that extends beyond the sell-off period which which it including means like video games animated books and or television programs right. etc Promoter shall have the right to continue development of and exploitation of such goods and merchandise and programming until the end of the commercial life thereof. So, um, any any wrestling video any wrestler video game that had a wrestler in it that was released before the game came out. 
They, they can still use their they likeness use and the name likeness, and all yeah. of that, and they can't really do much about it because they signed off those rights, rights to do so. Wrestler yes. agrees and grants promoter during the term the unconditional exclusive right throughout the world to use, simulate, and portray wrestlers' name, likeness, voice, personality, personal identification, and personal experiences, characters if owned by her, him, or promoter, incident situations, events, which heretofore occurred or hereafter occur in whole or in part, that relates in any manner to the wrestler's life and wrestler's wrestling career in connection with the license, licensing, sub-licensing, manufacturer, distribution, publication, exploitation of wrestlers, autobiography, or authorized biography. So book rights. Right. I mean, well, there's book rights, but then there's publishing rights, which are so very which different. Is, right. Which is, which is actually the next one yeah, on the list. Now, now remember, keep in mind if you're just joining us, uh, the link to this will be in the description below. If you want to read along with us, we are at number four. Mm -hmm. we're, at, uh, we're at part four, which is uh, merchandising. Publishing rights. Wrestler agrees and grants promoter during the term the unconditional exclusive right throughout the world to use, simulate, and portray the wrestler's name, likeness, voice, personality, personal identification, personal experiences, characters, if owned by her or promoter, incidents, situations, and events which heretofore occurred or hereafter occur in whole or in part as it relates to any matter of the wrestler's life or wrestler's wrestling career in connection with the creation and sales for movies or other form of media now known and hereafter discovered as promoter shall determine in its sole discretion collectively publishing rights. So this is where video games, um, any kind of movie, any kind of marketing, any kind of commercial, right. essentially WWE is the people that the um, these other companies will essentially have to talk to regarding this right. to get their blessing. Like essentially, you have no control of what you accept. Right, right. But they're, you, they're going usually, to accept it for you. Right. Usually, there's not like a big deal about this because WWE will always want to jump on the opportunity to get into a mainstream thing like a wrestler in a movie or whatever. Right. Um. But this is just to cover their ass that like uh, Batista can't go off and make a movie if he was signed with WWE. I mean, maybe their contract was slightly skewed than this, but you never know. So, wrestler, so this is auction sale rights. Wrestler agrees and grants promoter during the term the unconditional exclusive right throughout the world to sell via the internet, television, through any distribution model uh, method now known or hereafter created by an auction method. Any item containing wrestler intellectual property, which shall include but not limited to items containing wrestler signature. So we're talking about right. like all the little goodies that you get with the video game boxes. Right, or the, the WWE auction website. Right. All of this is actually done um, with the blessing. Well, well yeah. And signing, then, signing this. And then we the have blessing. The Undertaker, his, his sale of his, some of his stuff, I think that was organized by the WWE. So WWE yes. owns those items. They own, they own the items. They own the intellectual property. They own all of it. So it's not like they can really do much right. about it. Right. All right. Exclusivity. It is the understanding of the parties that during the term, the worldwide rights to other to wrestler services, appearances, and our performances in the entertainment industry whether related to uh, professional wrestling, sports entertainment, or other appearances are exclusive to promoter. Without limiting the generality of the foregoing, it is the further understanding of the rights that all rights, licensing, privileges, and all items herein or granted or assigned by wrestler to promoter hereunder are exclusive to promoter even to the exclusion of wrestler. So essentially, that, 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 that essentially means that if you work for the WWE, you can't work for anybody else. Oh, this is where they get around that little loophole bullshit, yep. even though they're 1099s. Yep. Okay. <laughs> but doesn't 1099s totally negate that, or is it because they actually they, sign They signed this agreement, so... <laughs> <laughs> This is their non-compete clause. <laughs> no, this is their, you can't wrestle for anybody else despite you being a fucking 1099. In the event... Wrestler, well, Stephanie McMahon's not a 1099, but I'm pretty sure there's something the event, different there. In the event, wrestler desires upon reasonable notice to promote her during the terms, either individually or through her authorized representatives to participate in other appearances, whether or not procured by promoter, wrestler may do so only subject yep. to condition upon promoter's express written Rin approval can, and provided that a written sub license is executed between the promoter, wrestler, and any relevant third parties. 
and further provided that the rest are not utilizing intellectual property in any manner in connection with permitted activities without the promoter's written consent. Notwithstanding the foregoing, it is agreed that promoter retains first priority to the exclusion of any such permitted activities with respect to the use and scheduling of wrestler services at all times during the term of this agreement, as defined herein. It is further agreed that the promoter shall receive from the wrestler a management fee to reimburse promoter for any reasonable administrative costs associated uh, incurred uh, in connection with wrestler's participation. Each permitted activity provided that promoter's costs shall not be less than 10% of any fees by a wrestler for each permitted activity described herein. Additionally, all monies earned by the wrestler from such permitted activities in a specific contract year shall be credited against the minimum annual compensation for that contract year as set what? forth in paragraph 7.1. What? So... Any kind of outside work that these people do, WWE just takes it from their wrestling salary. Yeah, pretty much. Take it from their base. What? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire... Why would you do anything outside of the... Why would you sign this? Like, legitimately, you are a 1099, presumably, and I guarantee you, if we read any other contract, and if any wrestler who's been released by WWE, can you please fucking send us your contract? I'm pretty sure WWE won't care. Terms and territory. Unless, Actually, please send it to us. <laughs> unless terminated pursuant to the terms herein, the term of this agreement shall be for three years from the effective Oops. date. Each consecutive 12-month period during the term commencing from the, expect- from the effective date shall be referred to as contract. Year. Notwithstanding any herein to the contrary, termination of agreement for any or no reason shall not affect promoter's ownership of and rights to or to any intellectual property rights, include but not limited to any works, promoter, intellectual property, and any registrations thereof, and the rights, results, and proceeds in and to derive from wrestler during the term of this agreement. And the exploitation of rights set forth in sections 1, 2, 3, and 4 hereof of any and all media now known or here and after discovered. And the territory of this agreement shall be the world. Here and after described as territory. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so. What? So essentially it just describes how long this agreement is for. <gasps> I and- see. What the territory? Well, this this is, is that this is this specific agreement. So, so, this, so like this will there, change per right? Contract. So, so there are some wrestlers, for example, that have exclusive agreements, maybe within only a certain region, like Japan, right? And then or or, outs- the, or with NXT UK, right. the United Kingdom, right? Right. So, if they wrestle outside of that, they might not necessarily be under that same. They, they might not be under that same uh, agreements. Right. So the contract has, some contracts do have a specific territory where, you know, they have exclusive rights to. Right. No, that, I mean, huh, that's kind of weird. Um, that's, an, that's a very interesting, ooh, this one is going to be good because I actually read a little bit of this before. Payments and royalties, I unless might be. terminated. Pursuant to terms herein, promoter shall pay wrestler each contract year the total sum of three hundred and twenty-five thousand. Now remember, this is Stephanie McMahon's contract. This part will change per contract. Right. Here, referred to here and after is minimum annual compensation. Promoters agree, uh, commencing with the effective date, to pay the wrestler the minimum annual compensation and fifty-two weekly installments consistent with promoter's regular payment. Procedures. So they're paid weekly. Essentially, this is this is a weekly payment. Yep, promoter shall be entitled to deduct from minimum annual compensation any fine, fines levied against wrestler provided to in sections eight point three or nine point thirteen. Any costs which were not even there or yet. Expensive paid by promoter on behalf of wrestler as provided for in sections eight point one and nine point one three or any deductions permitted set forth in section ten point seven point seven ten point two. Promoter shall have the rights of credit against the minimum annual compensation, any royalties earned by wrestler, any payments made to wrestler by promoter in accordance with section 7.2 and or any other payments due or earned by wrestlers for the rights granted herein pursuant to the terms of the agreement. Wait, 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 wait. WWE can take 
the this annual payment that three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars away from Stephanie McMahon if she sells enough t shirts? Sure. If they want? Yeah. Well, I guess if you're making more um, on your royalties than you do with the annual wages, why would you even bother caring right. about the annual salary? Right. And then obviously it reintroduced what we saw in um, what we saw before with if you have outside work, WWE can take part of your wages because you already made that money. Right. So. So, anyways, smart motherfuckers, I man. Know. <laughs> unless, unless terminated for breach pursuance to sections two point one through twelve point two, if applicable, at least one hundred and twenty days after each contract year, if it is determined that the wrestlers earn more than the minimum annual compensation for services rendered during that contract year, wrestlers shall be paid subject to any permitted deductions or credits in accordance with section seven point one, and a one lump sum the difference between the minimum annual compensation and what the wrestler actually earned for services rendered during the contract, the contract year. So um, for, I, I guess for an example, because they sign a yearly contract, not like a blank. Um, if somebody is working in Impact Wrestling um, for a part of that year, WWE can take part of the money that they were supposed to get from right. WWE um, based on the compensation from Impact Wrestling, which right. which I'm going to assume there's going to be a point in here where uh, WWE says you have to disclose what you're going to be making with right. Impact. Right. Okay, go ahead. If a wrestler appears or performs at any non-televised live event as defined as an event produced by a promoter in an arena before a live audience at which admission is charged, other than the, uh, those arena events which are taped for broadcast... Right. Um, wrestlers shall be paid by promoter amounts equal in promoter's sole discretion to such percentage of paid receipts for such non-televised live event only as it is as it is consistent with the nature of the match with the wrestler appears, i.e. preliminary, mid-card, main event, etc. And any standard promoter establishes specifically for such non-televised live events. So essentially it's like wrestler gets a percentage of the ticket sales right. depending on... How many? The, the people in the main event will probably make more on those ticket exactly. sales than the people who do on the lower exactly. Card. Right. Exactly. Well, but that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, I'm not if even. If wrestler mad about that. appears and performs in any connection with an arena or studio event produced by a promoter, which is taped for broadcast for use on promoter's television network or TV taping, TV taping, wrestler shall be paid by a promoter in his sole discretion and amount only as is consistent with the nature of the match in which wrestler appears, i.e., preliminary, mid card, main event, etc. So literally, essentially the same thing, but this is for television. Mm -hmm. Right. And any other standards promoter establishes specifically for such TV taping. And then Section C essentially is the same for pay-per-view. Right. Um, so basically, um, so even though they're all in the main event, John Cena's uh, ticket will be probably more than, let's say, um, Seth Rollins. Right. Same kind of level, but I think they're doing it based on that. And that's up to WWE's discretion on... Um, what wrestler makes what from right. the ticket sales. Right. right. So royalties, in the event that intellectual property is used alone or in conjunction with the intellectual property of other promoter talent via product sale, wrestler shall be paid a portion of the product's net receipts, a portion of the pool thereof, established for the wrestler and all other promoter talent received by promoter with respect to the product sale, which portion shall be established from time to time by promoter to be generally consistent with other of its top talents. Product net receipts mean the gross amount received by a promoter or its affiliates directly or from a licensee in a product sale less actual expense per incurred by promoter or its licensing agent in connection with the product sale and in certain circumstances an administrative fee. For example, such as cost of goods sold, licensing agent percentages, and allocable promotions of marketing commitments made by promoter. So... Um, that just means that uh, that just sets forth the percentage that everyone is paid for selling a T-shirt, like, right? Like what percentages? What percentages? And just, that's and that is right. up to WWE's discretion. Yes, and this is what was essentially written in there. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then it just goes through what product sale and other promoter talent means. We pretty much established. We we that. pretty much established that, but they're breaking it down for more of like continuity reasons, right? Subject to. 12.2 as it relates to the rest so of the now, So now we're on um, 7.4 if yes. you're not keeping mm -hmm. score. Uh, for a performance of any services pursuant to this agreement, including the appearance of any performance of wrestler services at events or other activities conducted by promoter, 
Wrestlers shall be eligible only for payments and royalties specifically set forth in Section 7.1 through 7.3. So this is covering um, wrestlers' appearances on non-wrestling events like um, meet and greets and stuff like that. Right. Um, those royalties will still be owned by WWE. No royalties paid to wrestler except specifically set forth in Section 7.1 to 7.3 above. Wrestlers shall be eligible for any payment or royalty with respect to any other goods, services, or otherwise included with that limitation. The following. Television license fees. Television subscription fees, internet sub subscription fees, subscription video on demand fees, magazine subscription free fees, and or advertising and or distribution fees of any kind promoted to the promoter and any ent entity in connection with the exploitation of the intellectual property. So that just means that the wrestlers, they don't get a percentage of the, the lice like video... Uh, like like the video and stuff produced by WWE. Right. They right. don't get any of that. So even like on Peacock, they don't get any of that money. They don't get any of that money. Wow. <laughs> wait. Wait, 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 wait. So if a wrestler wrestles on Peacock, they're not going to get any of that advertising revenue, any of that television no. deal, none of that. No. Why, why the fuck would you sign this stupid thing? <laughs> All payments made to the wrestler are in full. Uh, are in full without withholding except where required by law that each of the calendar year promoter shall issue to a wrestler internal revenue service form at 1099 showing all payments to wrestler during that calendar year. So 1099. They're 1099 wrestlers even though they're, they're, they're signing this contract. They're, why? Why would you sign this stupid fucking contract? It doesn't make any goddamn sense. All of this shit, literally all of this shit could be totally better if they were W9s, but they're not. They're 1099s. So if wrestler at any time during the term is unable to wrestle for six consecutive weeks due to injury suffered while performing services at promoter's discretion, promoter may, for every non-televised live event or TV taping as designed, as, as described in section 7.2, reduce the minimum annual compensation by 0.5% and or for pay-per-view as described in section 7.2, Reduce the minimum annual compensation by the average paid by the wrestler for the three months uh, immediately preceding the pay-per-views, or if wrestler appeared any fewer than three pay-per-views in the average wrestler for uh, any similar events, or 0.5% uh, if a wrestler did not appear in any similar events. So, so if you're injured, they, WWE can deduct your pay by 0.5% yeah. per month. Yeah. Promoter <laughs> shall prepare and send statements as to royalties payable here under to wrestlers within 90 days following the end of each quarter based on the royalties received and processed by promoter in the previous quarter together with payment of royalties of any earned by a wrestler here under uh, under such quarter annual period less advances or debits made by the promoter on wrestler's behalf. Promoter shall maintain books of account related to the payment of royalties here and after as principal place of business. Wrestler or wrestler's designated independent certified public accountant who is in a member of good standing may at wrestler's sole expense examine promoter's books insofar as they pertain to the agreement for the purpose of verifying the accuracy thereof during promoter's normal business hours and under such reasonable notice. Such audit shall be conducted in a manner that will not unreasonably interfere with the promoter's normal business operations. Wrestlers shall audit promoters' books and records more than twice during any calendar year, and no such audit can be conducted later than six months after the most recent statement of royalties is given, delivered, or sent to wrestler. Do wrestlers have to audit the promoter for this? What? No, so if a wrestler sends an accountant in because he thinks there's a, there's a, <gasps> there's a problem with the books... Got it. Yeah. But that'd be totally independent Each, from the wrestler. Yeah. Right, yep. right, right, right. Okay. Each audit is limited to five days in duration. Statements of royalties may be changed from time to time to reflect year-end adjustments, to correct clerical errors, and for similar purposes. I haven't heard of anything like this happening. I'm pretty sure it's had at some point or another, but WWE is just trying to cover their ass in ev literally every way, shape, and form. So wrestlers shall be deemed to have consented to all statements of royalties and other accountings provided by promoter here under and after each statement of royalties 
or other accounting shall be conclusive, final, and binding, shall constitute an account stated, and shall not be subject to any objection for any reason whatsoever unless an audit has been conducted by a wrestler to promoter within one year of the day of the royalty statement was given, delivered, and sent to wrestler. So essentially what that means is if you have a discrepancy with how much royalty was given to you by the promoter, which is WWE in this case, um, you can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. And um, unless you bring in another person, which is your right as a 1099, you have to do it within the year. Right. Or so, or after like six months during business hours. and No no claim shall be filed pursuant to section 13.8 below against promoter or promoter's affiliates that disputes any statements of royalties right. or accounting given by promoter here under and make any claims for royalties or royalty payments unless the same is commenced or filed with one within one year after the day of such statement accounting is first given, delivered, and, or sent to wrestler and unless wrestler has first exhausted their remedies pursuant to section 7.8. <gasps> <clears throat> that was attractive. Sorry. So, uh, so essentially, it's you can't really do anything about it. Like you would have to know legal jargon to the Nats' ass because WWE knows better. Essentially. So let's do the promoter's obligations. Ah, so now this is promoter's obligations. So this is what WWE is is pretty much forcing themselves. Hang on, Peanut Gallery needs a little drink of wine. A little drink of. His, mm. Because, I mean, this is a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, just because I am, I'm not a retard. I, just, I mean, I can interpret it, essentially, but I just can't really, like, read the legal jargon. Right. Because it's so weird. Like, legal jargon is the weirdest fucking language. So, under Section 9.1, wrestlers shall bear... Wait, 9.1 or are we 8.1? So, although under Section 9.1... Oh, Sorry. Maybe I should read Wrestler it. <laughs> shall bear responsibility for obtaining appropriate licenses for participating in wrestling ex exhibits. Promoter shall be responsible for obtaining all other appropriate licenses to conduct professional wrestling exhib exhibitions involving wrestler. If promoter agrees to assist wrestler in obtaining such licenses, which shall include any permits, visas, or otherwise, wrestler shall reimburse promoter for its fees and expenses. Wait, wait. The wrestler... Wait. So the wrestler gives money to WWE for the licenses like visas and shit. Well, no, they're responsible for it, but if WWE has to step in for any reason, the wrestler has to pay WWE. Okay. Yep. Promoter shall bear the following costs in connection with development and enhancement of the value of wrestlers' performances here under and wrestlers standing in the professional wrestling community, all of which shall benefit wrestlers. In connection with the wrestler's appearances and any events produced by promoter and stage for a live audience, promoter shall bear the cost of location rental. Promoter's third-party comprehensive liability insurance for the benefit of the venue's applicable state and local admission taxes, promotional assistance, sound light equipment, wrestling rings, official police and fire protection, and additional security guards as promoter shall require in its discretion during a professional wrestling match. So WWE is covering everything else from security to emergency services and everything. And this is yep. just this is just what they're this is what they're yeah. Essentially this is what the promoter this is what WWE is gonna cover your ass on for every single reason. In right. connection with the production, distribution, exploitation of the footage, promoter shall about all costs in connection with such production, distribution, broadcast, transmission, or other forms of... The wrestler activity. is not paying squat deadly for it, right? No. In connection with any product or service licensing activities and our merchandising activities, promoter shall bear the cost of negotiating, securing, or otherwise obtaining the product or service licensing arrangements, including the cost of agents, consultants, attorneys, and others involved in making the product or service licensing activities, and promoter shall bear all costs of creating, designing, developing, producing and marketing merchandise or services in order to fulfill these obligations, promote make any arrangements, contra contractual or otherwise, as it deems appropriate to delegate, assign, or otherwise transfer its obligations. Promoter shall schedule the events and book the wrestler for the events. In doing so, promoter shall select the time and location for events at which wrestler is booked, wrestler's opponent, any other wrestlers who will appear at such event. Promoter shall provide wrestler with reasonable advance and notice of the date, time, and place of any such event. And the wrestler shall have the designated location for any event no later than a one hour before the designated time. The wrestler fails to appear with required, as required without advance 24-hour notice to promoter. 
and promoter must substitute another wrestler to appear in wrestler's place at event, then promoter may fine, suspend, or terminate wrestler at its sole discretion. So if you're late, WWE will probably, like, either... They can do what they want, but they're going to book you, essentially. This is their... This is basically their kind of thing where, in legal term, they got to book you if they, if they sign you. Or, well, it's not they have to book you. You just have to show up to whatever they, they want you to show up to. Right. Well, with, within an hour of them actually telling you, if you're, like, 10 minutes late, it's whatever. Notwithstanding the above, if wrestler shall be prevented from appearing at event by reason of force majeure... Its above fine shall not be imposed. For purposes of this agreement, force majeure shall mean any act of God. Fire, flood, war, other calamity, strike or labor difficulties, any governmental action or any other serious emergency affecting wrestler or which occurrence is beyond re- wrestler's reasonable control and, and which despite best efforts prohibits wrestler's appearance or other or appearance at such event. So... If there's a if if you're affected in some reason you can't make it because of something that you cannot prevent right like an injury right then would, would an injury be technically a part if of you, that if or? you got into a car accident were rushed to the hospital they they're not going to dock they they, you. they can't they can't do anything about that or if um if your plane is late or something like that just let them know and they really can't do anything about that all right well here's our favorite section of the whole thing the wrestlers obligations let's oh, see what the wrestler God. is responsible for this is going to be a nightmare all right, wrestler shall bear responsibility for obtaining all appropriate licenses to engage in, participate in, or otherwise appear in professional wrestling exhibitions. You don't technically really see a whole lot of this nowadays, um, other than like um, like clearance on medical shit and right. whatever. Um, there used to be like um, wrestlers' licenses that were covered, but I don't think we've seen those since the fucking 1970s. All right, so let's see. Wrestler shall be responsible for wrestlers' own training, conditioning, and maintenance of wrestling skills and abilities. As long right. As they do not interfere with wrestlers' appearances as scheduled events as follows so wrestler shall establish your own training program select time of training duration of training exercise pattern exercise and other actions appropriate to obtaining and maintaining physical fitness for wrestling they shall select their own training apparatus including mats weights machines and other exercise paraphernalia wrestler is responsible for supplying their own training facilities and equipment but whether by purchase lease license or otherwise and Wrestlers shall establish their own method of physical conditioning, the time of conditioning, duration of conditioning, form of conditioning. They shall select time for sleep, eating, and other activities. Shall select their own foods, vitamins, and other ingested items, accepting illegal and controlled substances and drugs. So basically what this – I mean I'm not sure if this really counts anymore because they have the WWE Performance Center. But um, it's up to the wrestler to work out how long they want, um, eat what they want. And yes, they got to put that in the contract because if they don't, then WWE can say you can't eat this. Um this is legal jargon. Right. They're essentially just covering their ass on everything. This is the wrestler's obligation. All right. Well, here's where it gets Other than that, I'm not, I'm not like... Um, Wrestler shall be responsible for providing all costumes, wardrobes, props, Even though WWE owns it. Makeup necessary for the performance of wrestler services and the event. And wrestler shall bear our cost incurred in connection with his and her transportation to and from any such event. Except for transportation costs which are covered by promoters then current travel policy as well as the cost of food consumed in hotel lodging utilized by wrestler in connection with their appearance at such events. So if you go to the fucking um, hotel bar and have a couple of drinks, that's not WWE's thing. You can't you're even... Your- you, right, you're a 1099. So even staying at the hotel, if you have to stay at a hotel for 200 nights a year because you're on the road... WWE didn't pay a dime of that. You right. pay all of that. Right. All those plane tickets and crap, that, yeah, that's all on uh, you. The costumes and the makeup and everything like that's that. That's all though, on you. Right. Even though WWE owns it, you got to pay for it. Wrestler shall use best efforts in employing wrestler skills and abilities as a professional wrestler and be responsible for developing and executing various details, movement, and maneuvers required of wrestlers in a professional wrestling exhibition. Wrestler shall take precautions as are appropriate to avoid any unreasonable risk of injury to themselves uh, and to others on behalf in any and all events. 
These precautions shall include, without limitation, pre-match review of all wrestling moves and maneuvers with wrestling partners and opponents and pre-match demonstrations and or practice with wrestling partners and opponents to ensure familiarity with anticipated wrestling moves and maneuvers during a wrestling match. In the event of injury to wrestler and or wrestler's partners or opponents during a wrestling match, wrestler shall immediately signal partner opponents and or referees that it is time for the match to end and wrestlers shall finish the match forthwith to avoid aggravation of such injury. So get used to your opponent. If there's something wrong, it's not WWE's responsibility to know. Wrestler shall bear, uh, shall use best efforts in ring and performance of wrestling services for a match or other activity in order to provide an honest exhibition of wrestlers. Wrestling skills or abilities consistent with the customs of the professional wrestling industry and wrestlers agrees that the match shall be finished in accordance with, uh, with the promoter's direction. Breach of this shall cause a forfeiture of any payments to wrestler pursuant to Section 7 shall entitle promoter to terminate this agreement or to suspend wrestler without pay. But such breach shall not terminate promoter's licenses or other rights under this agreement. If the promoter at its discretion suspends the agreement when reinstated, the promoter may extend the term of this agreement for a period of time equal to the suspension or any portion thereof of this agreement and will therefore continue of full force in effect throughout the remainder of the term. So, um, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, basically, you are in charge of you. Mm -hmm. Like, that's pretty much what it's saying. Yeah, pretty much. Like, there's nothing out of the realm of, like, no shit Sherlock. I mean, obviously, WWE are not mind readers. They Mm -hmm. don't know, you know, oh, my gosh, um, this person is hurt. Unless you say explicitly that you are hurt because they've had instances where they made the call... And the wrestler got upset because maybe they weren't hurt. Right. So wrestler agreed to cooperate and assist without any additional payment in the publicizing, advertising, and promoting of scheduled events, including without limitation appearing at or participating in a reasonable number of joint and or separate press conferences, interviews, or other publicly um, uh, publicity or exploitation appearances or activities any of which may be filmed, taped, or otherwise recorded, telecast by any form of television now known and hereafter discovered without limitation, free cable, pay cable, subscription, video on demand, video on demand, and closed circuit pay-per-view television broadcast, exhibited, distributed, and used in any other manner or media by and by any art, method, or device known or hereafter created, including without limitation by means of video disc, video cassette, theatrical motion picture, and or non-theatrical motion picture and internet at times, places designated by a promoter in connection herewith. So it's like when John Cena makes appearances for WrestleMania. He's paying part of that cost. Right. That sort of thing. Right. That's why he's not showing up anymore. Well, wrestler then also that wrestler acknowledges the right to promote or make any decisions with respect to the preparation or exploitation of footage and or the exercise of any other rights respecting the wrestler or promoter intellectual property. And with this connection, wrestler acknowledges and agrees that promoter's decision to, uh, with respect to any agreements disposing the rights of the wrestler or promoter intellectual property are final. Except as to wrestler's legal name, which promoter may only dispose upon wrestler's written consent, wrestler agrees to execute any agreements promoter deems necessary in connection with any such agreements, and if wrestler unavailable or refuse to execute such agreements, promoter is hereby authorized to do so in wrestler's name as wrestler's attorney in fact. So if the wrestler does not want to sign a contract and the WWE needs them to sign a contract, WWE can essentially say, we are going to sign the contract on your behalf and there's nothing you can do about it. Right. We own you. We own you. You're basically owned even though you're 1099. Wrestler agrees to fully (laughs) cooperate and in good faith with promoter to obtain any and all documentation, application, or physical examinations as may be required by any governing authority uh, with respect to wrestler appearance and or performance in a professional wrestling match. So essentially they have to pay for their own whatevers. Their own... Their own like physical examinations and licenses oh, for certain I states. See. Yeah, yeah, no, that's like, that's what I was saying. Stuff, like right. with like physicals and whatever. Right, 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 right. The wrestler on behalf of it, uh, on behalf of themselves and their heir successors, assigns and personal representatives shall ident- identify and defend promoter and promoter's licensees, assignees, parent corporations, subsidiaries, and affiliates, and of his respective officers, directors, employees, advertisers, insurers, and representatives, and hold each of them harmless against any claims, demand, liabilities, actions, cost suits, attorney fees, proceedings, or expenses incurred on behalf of them by any reason whatsoever. 
wrestler's breach or any alleged breach of any warranty undertaking representation agreement or certification made or entered into herein or here under by wrestler wrestler on behalf of themselves and their heir successors assigned to personal representatives shall identify and defend promoter and promoter's licensees assignees parent corporations subsidiaries affiliates and and it's in their rep- respective officers directors employees advertisers insurers and, rep- and representatives and hold each of them harmless against any and all claims, demands, liabilities, actions, costs, suits, attorney's fees, proceedings, or expenses incurred by any of them arising out of the wrestler's acts, transactions, or conduct within or around the ring, hallways, dressing rooms, parking lots, or any other areas in the immediate vicinity where the promoter has scheduled events at which wrestler is booked. So, so if, if a wrestler goes to a bar afterwards, gets into a bar fight, the, the person who who was on the other side of that fight cannot sue the WWE. Right. Like, no matter what. Um, and obviously, there were a couple of instances of that. Um, Umaga was released because he was in a bar fight, and they just decided to release him. Wrestler shall be responsible for payment of all wrestlers on federal, state, or local income taxes, all Social Security, FICA, FUTA taxes, if any, as well as all contributions to retirement plans and programs, or other supplemental income plan or program which would provide wrestler with personal or monetary benefits upon retirement from professional wrestling. So WWE is not going to be paying for your retirement plan if you sign with this company. That's you're you're, you're a 1099, so right. they, a, they're not now. You're a 1099, but we're just going to own you. Now this one, I love this part here because this is in bold. Oh, yeah. Wrestler shall be responsible for her own commercial general liability insurance. Workers' compensation insurance, professional liability insurance, as well as any excess liability insurance, as they deem appropriate to insure, identify, and defend wrestler with respect to any and all claims arising out of his or her own acts, transactions, or conduct as a professional wrestler. You are responsible for your insurance, and there's nothing you can do about it when signing this contract. Wrestler acknowledges that the participation in activities required by a wrestler in connection with his or her performance in a professional wrestling exhibition may be dangerous and may involve the risk of serious bodily injury, including death. Wrestler knowingly and freely assumes a full responsibility for all such inherent risks, as well as those due to the negligence of promoter <laughs> or other wrestlers. What? <laughs> That's the dumb... <laughs> if the ring falls apart and I die, WWE you, is not responsible right. for it. If WWE <laughs> are a bunch of shoddy little shit and a light falls on somebody, oopsie poopsies. <laughs> wrestler hereby releases waves and discharges Fuck. promoter from all liability to wrestler and covenants to not sue promoter for any and all loss or damage on the account of injury to their person or property resulting in serious or permanent injury to wrestler or in wrestler's death. If you get fucking paralyzed, we're whether, not responsible. Whether caused by negligence of promoter or other wrestlers under contract to promoter. Why would you <laughs> sign this stupid fucking contract in any way, shape, or form? That is... Like, why? Why in the Blue Island fuck would you sign this stupid fucking contract? And this is bold. And it is also a very... It is also in all capital, notwithstanding right. promoter's current policy of paying medical expense for injuries wrestlers may incur while performing under this agreement wrestler shall maintain at their cost and expense health insurance coverage. This health insurance must remain in effect for the term of the agreement. And wrestler shall provide promoter proof of this insurance annually. Why? Wrestler may at their election obtain health, life, or disability insurance to provide benefits in the event of physical injury um, arising out of other professional activities. And wrestler acknowledge that promoter shall not have any responsibility for such insurance or payment in the event of the physical injury arising out of her professional activities. So basically, if you have health insurance and you get injured in the oh, ring. Oh, no, you have to have health insurance. You have to have health insurance. It's not an if. It's not a choice. You have to, but you're paying for it, and you're working exclusively with this stupid fucking company. In the event of physical injury arising out of the wrestler's professional activities, wrestler acknowledges that as independent contractor, they are not entitled to any worker's compensation coverage or other similar benefits for injury, disability, death, or a loss of wages, and wrestlers shall make no claim against promoter for such coverage or benefit. 
you cannot say anything to WWE no matter what, even if it's in a pandemic and you want to do Twitch to supplement your lost income. <laughs> no. <laughs> Basically, you have to have insurance. You have to. But if you die in our ring because we're a bunch of fucking retards, we're not paying for you. Right. Sorry, Charlie. Like, fuck. Like, why would you, even Stephanie McMahon, why would you sign this stupid fucking contract? Like, legitimately. Wrestlers shall act at all times with due regard to the public morals and conventions Fuck of, you. during the term of this agreement. If wrestlers shall have committed or shall commit any act or do anything that is an offense, a violation involving moral turpitude under federal state or local laws, or which brings wrestler into public disputes, contempt, scandal, or ridicule, which uh, or which insults or offends the community or any employee, agent, or affiliate promoter which injures wrestler's reputation and promoter's sole judgment or diminishes the value of wrestler's professional wrestling services to the public or promoter, then at the time of any such act or any time after promoter learns of any such act, promoter shall have the right to fine wrestler to the amounts uh, determined by promoter. Then the promoter shall have the right to immediately suspend wrestler or or terminate the agreement. So if you do something bad outside of it that if could you, possibly hurt your reputation. If you, if, if you pull the Velveteen Dream, then they have the right to fire you. Right, which they eventually did, but that was after like a bunch of... Should at any time during the term wrestler involved in any way with criminal or legal, uh, civil legal proceedings, or regulatory or administrative hearing, or you know, like an immigration hearing or otherwise... Promoter shall have the right but not the obligation to retain counsel to represent wrestler uh, in the proceeding, and promoter shall be entitled to deduct the minimum annual compensation, any all costs and expense, including attorney's fees related to the proceeding. Oh my god. What? So WWE is essentially saying if so, we have to represent you in any way, shape, or form regarding any kind of legal proceeding, you're paying for it. Yes. We're taking that out of your salary. <laughs> Promoter, is this normal? This this doesn't seem not, normal. Uh, be admitting that promoter has any obligations, liability, and or responsibility whatsoever in connection with the proceeding. During the term, the uh, wrestler acknowledges and agrees uh, that sh they shall not work or perform in any capacity for any other martial arts or wrestling organization and or entity not controlled there you by go. the owner or any affiliated subsidiary company hereof or otherwise in the entertainment industry without, uh, including without limitations, appearances, and live events, pay-per-view, other televised events. That is where WWE cannot have wrestlers go anywhere else. Right, right. unless they give their explicit permission or they work with them. Right. That's why, like, um, you can go to, like, prog if you were signed with WWE, which I don't know why you would, um, you can go to Progress because Progress is, well, now they own them, but they were affiliated with them. So you can work for them. Um, and I'm going to assume that they have some bullshit about any kind of payment that you have of that bullshit. We're going to take it out of your fucking general salary. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Wrestler represents Warren and agrees that wrestler is free to enter this to agreement and grant the rights and licenses here and grant it to a promoter. Wrestler has not heretofore entered and shall not hereafter enter into any contract or agreement, which is in conflict with the position... Uh, uh, provisions hereof or which might interfere with the full and complete performance by a wrestler of her obligations here under or the free and unimpaired exercise by promoter of any of the rights licenses and licenses granted to it wrestler further represents and warrants there are no prior or pending claims administrative proceedings civil lawsuits criminal prosecutions or other litigation matters including without limitation to any immigration or athletic commission related matters affecting wrestler which might interfere with promoters full and complete exercise or enjoyment of any rights or licenses granted here under so essentially you can't do anything else like you have to like so like Britt Baker she could not if she if she signed with the E she could not be the dentist right she cannot be a licensed dentist with an office right. or anything right 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 wrestler represents and warrants that wrestler is in sound mental and physical condition that wrestler is suffering from no disabilities or pre-existing conditions or injuries which would impair or ser or adversely affect wrestler's ability to perform professional wrestling services that. A wrestler is free from the influence of illegal drugs and controlled substances, which can threaten wrestlers' well-being and pose a risk of injury to wrestler or others. 
<laughs> so if you're under drugs, you can't be under drugs. Like, to ensure compliance with this it. warranty, wrestlers shall abide by any uh, drug policy conveyed to wrestler and their representatives, as well as any and all amendments, additions, or modifications to any such drug policy, and wrestler further consents to sampling and testing in accordance with such drug policy. In addition, wrestler agrees to submit no less than annually to complete physical examinations by physicians either selected or approved by a promoter. In the event that a wrestler is unable to wrestle for six weeks during the term of the agreement for any or no reason, including the out limitation due to an injury suffered while performing services at promoter's discretion, promoter shall have the right thereafter to terminate this agreement or suspend the wrestler without pay or extend the term of this agreement for any period of time equal to the entire period of the inability to wrestle or any portion thereof. Upon certification by wrestler or promoter's physician during the period of suspension that wrestler is fully recovered and capable of performing all services required under this agreement, promoter shall have the right to reinstate this agreement, which will then uh, continue in full force throughout the remainder of the term. So this is where wrestlers, if they're injured, the WWE can extend their contract out. Right. Promoter reserves the right to have wrestler examined by a physician of its own choosing at the expense at any point to the term of this, at their expense, uh, at any point during the term. As a term of the promoter or the term of the wrestler? The promoter. Oh, okay. This agreement, so we're under early termination. We're getting close to the end here. This yes, we are. This agreement may be terminated by the promoter during the term for any or no reason whatsoever, providing wrestler with at least 90 days advance written notice of said termination. The 90th day then shall be defined as the termination date. So... This is you, you will you will know ahead of time if you're going to be terminated or if your contract is not um, being extended um, within the 90 days. The agreement Before. may be terminated prior to the end of the term by written instrument executed by each parties expressing their m mutual uh, consent to do so terminate without further liability on part of either party. The agreements may be terminated by promoter rest uh, immediately due to wrestlers breach contract. In the event of a termination, the promoter shall be obligated to pay wrestler a prorated portion of the minimum annual compensation up until the termination date and to pay the wrestler any royalties which may be due to the wrestler according, in, in accordance with uh, Section 7 of the wrestler's intellectual property. So this is where the 90-day non-compete clause comes from. Right. right. So, uh, they, so when they're talking about the, quote, release – that's when the 90 days start. But this is where if you are released early as accordance to that, like um, you will still get paid partially right. um, with your base and then all royalties will right. still, go, still yeah. go to you. It, that doesn't change anything. Right. So the agreement shall automatically and immediately terminate upon wrestler's death and promoter shall have no further obligation to wrestlers, wrestlers, heirs, successors, personal representative, or assigns pursuant to any of the terms herein. Uh, including but not limited to any payment obligations. Okay, so if, if you die, your, your family, family gets nothing. Right, you, your family doesn't get any of the royalties. Oh, that's wonderful. Upon expiration or termination, it's agreement for any reason. The parties acknowledge and agree that the promoter shall own a perpetuity any all rights, title, and interests, and all footage works. Promoter intellectual property and any registrations thereof. Promoter shall also have the exclusive right to sell or otherwise dispose of any materials, goods, merchandise, or other items. Um, set forth in section 4.2. Yeah. Right. Uh, upon expiration or termination of the agreement by the promoter pursuant to section 12.1, wrestlers shall not work, appear, or perform at any capacity for any wrestling, professional wrestling, sports, entertainment, mixed martial art, and or ultimate fighting organization. I wonder who they're talking about there. And not owned <laughs> or controlled by promoter. In the United States, for a period up to one year from the date of such expiration or termination as specified by the promoter. In the notice of the termination provided, however, there is no lesser period specified by the promoter at the notice of termination. Such period shall be one year. Breach. Hooray. Breach. Breach. What happens if you breach your contract? If you violate any oh, of the disgusting right. rules up top? So the promoter shall have the right of sole discretion to immediately suspend or terminate this agreement, both as a services and compensation if any of the following occurs. Promoter has the rights to terminate the wrestler if they uh, if they um, do not abide by the drug policy, right? As well as any other. If you refuse drug policy, you can be terminated. Wrestler is not in compliance with the representation or warranty uh, set forth in section ten point two, which is the physical examinations. Right. 
wrestler, wrestler is habitually late or absent from events uh, scheduled by the promoter. If you're late, you're going to get terminated. And then wrestler um, fails in any physical examination conducted on behalf of promoter. If you are not physically able to compete in any way, either if you're overweight or if you're hurt, WWE can terminate you. Wrestler fails to maintain physical condition or training such as their weight go. or their performance is unsatisfactory is determined by the promoter in their sole discretion. Wait, wait. The, the promoter is the one who determines that. Mm-hmm. Ah, huh, I see. Okay. Promoter on behalf of wrestler is unable to obtain any necessary athletic commission licenses or immigration documents. So, like, if, if they can't get your visa, you're, you're gone. Oh. <laughs> but that's not the response... <laughs> That's what's and the wrestler se- breaches section 9.13a. Which is what we discussed like three seconds ago. Anyway. In the event that the wrestler breaches this contract, promoter may recover such uh, direct damages that may be established in a court of law. In addition, the event of an immediate termination pursuant to 12.1a through f, wrestler shall forfeit and shall not be entitled to any remaining minimum annual compensation owed, any future payments that may be due to the wrestler. Wrestler shall not appear, use, refer, or exploit any manner, parenthetically or otherwise, a wrestler's intellectual property for the remainder of the term and the promoter intellectual property forever. Further, at promoter's sole option, the term of the agreement may be extended by the term of any suspension period, in whole or in part, with all other terms and conditions here. This is how, like, they force kept, like, extend. this this how they kept Brody Lee and Pac under the contract for a longer period of time right. was because of this provision. Right. The parties further agree that because of the special, unique, and extraordinary nature of the obligations of promoter and wrestler respecting all rights and licenses yeah, concerning unique. bookings. Uh, Bookings, promoting footage events, intellectual property, which are the subject matter of this agreement. Wrestler's breach of this agreement shall cause promoter irreparable injury, which may would cannot be adequately measured by monetary relief. As a consequence, promoter shall be entitled to injunctive or other equitable relief against wrestler to prevent wrestler's breach or default here under and such injunction and equitable relief shall be without prejudice to any other rights, remedies, or damages which a promoter is legally entitled to obtain. So, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I swear to God, like, I mean, even though this is Stephanie McMahon, so it's probably extremely favorable for the most part. This is so stupid. In no circumstances whatsoever shall either party to this agreement be liable to any other party for any punitive or exclaminary damages and all such damages whether arising out of the breach of this contract this agreement or otherwise are expressly waived <sighs> we're getting close we're getting really close all right section 13 miscellaneous nothing contained in this agreement shall be construed to constitute wrestler as an employee partner or joint venture. There you go. There you fucking go, people. <laughs> Nor shall wrestler have the authority to bind promoter in any respect. Wrestler is an independent contractor, and wrestler shall execute and hereby irrevocably appoint promoter attorney, in fact, to execute. If wrestler refuses to do so, any instrument necessary is to accomplish or confirm the foregoing and all rights granted to the promoter herein. There you go. That just confirmed it. There are 1099s. And if you don't agree to that, WWE can say, fuck you. The agreement contains the entire understanding of the parties with respect to the subject matter hereof and all prior understandings and negotiations and agreements are merged in this agreement. There are no other agreements, representations, or warranties set forth herein with respect to the subject matter hereof. And the parties expressly acknowledge that any representation, promise, or inducement by any other part by any party to any other party that is not embodied in this agreement is not part of this agreement. Right. This and is this is the agreement. Um, this is what you sign. And if you don't, we're gonna have a problem. And they agree that no party shall be bound by or liable for any such alleged representation, promise, or inducement not set forth within. The agreement may not be changed or altered except in writing. If any provision or clause of this agreement or portion hereof shall be held in a court or any other tribunal of competent jurisdiction to be illegal, invalid, or unenforceable in such jurisdiction, the remainder of such provisions shall not thereby be affected and shall be given full effect without regards to any of the invalid promotion. It is the intention 
of the parties that if any court construes any provision or clause of this agreement or any portion hereof to be illegal, void, or unenforceable because of the duration of such provision or the area or matter covered thereby, such courts shall reduce or modify a duration, area, or matter of such provision or and in its reduced or modified form, such provision shall be then enforceable and shall be enforced. <clears throat> Promoter shall have the right to assign, license, or transfer any of the rights granted by wrestler to promoter pursuant to the terms of this agreement to any person, firm, or corporation, provided that such assignee has financial ability to meet the promoter's obligations hereunder, and each assignee shall assume in writing. Promoter's obligations hereunder. Promoter shall be released from any liability and will have no further obligations to wrestler. Wrestler may assign, transfer, or delegate their rights or obligations hereunder, and any attempt to do so shall be void. Any notices required or desired hereunder shall be in writing and shall be deemed given when personally delivered or if mailed by certified mail, return, receipt, requested, or registered mail. When deposited in the United States mail, postage prepaid, or if telecopied, when telecopied, if sent by courier service, when deposited with any such service, or any over overnight delivery service on the next business day regarding delivery of such services, notices shall be address as follows and then they give you the promoter and rest so basically what all of that is saying is that the agreement that we just read that took an hour and 24 minutes will not be in effect until the promoter which is wwe and the wrestler which in this case is stephanie mcmahon has been looked at agreed to and signed if one of them doesn't it doesn't work Right. right, and and the wrestler understands, acknowledges that. So I've skipped a few sections here because right, you know. it's a, a lot. A lot of this at this point is just going to be like agreement stuff and what we just explained. Right, and so uh, wrestler understands, acknowledges that from time to time during the term, they may request that attorneys uh, employed or by or associated with promoter represent wrestler's interests in connection with certain contracts or other. Uh, so th th this is basically saying that a um, a contract lawyer at any point in time can look at this contract on behalf of the wrestler on their expense. Mm -hmm. That's basically what they're saying, but that's uh, that's a legal law that they have to do. Right, and then uh, section 14 talks about confidentiality. Now, this is the section where it's okay for us to read this because this, well, number one, it was on their fucking website. But um, at this time... It's an under the disclosure of the wrestler for it to be public domain. This is public domain. Right. You can literally look at this right now. We did not get this under any nefarious way. Peanut Gallery said it before. But um, this is just basically jargon that it is up to the competitor unless you're a shareholder, mm -hmm. which you have to put this out there anyway that um, you can keep this within your records and you don't have to show this to anybody Unless you're a publicly right. traded entity, so like so if you if you if you go to um, if you go down because a lot of this at this point this is, like I said just confidentiality stuff right um, but if you go down so page seventeen that's all the signatures and stuff but page eighteen uh, they have three exhibits so these are this is the wrestler intellectual property and the promoter intellectual property right so if if Stephanie McMahon leaves and, and decides to wrestle for AEW, she can go by Stephanie McMahon or Stephanie McMahon Levesque. Right, because that's her name. And But uh, WWE owns the Alliance, Boss Lady, and the Billion Dollar Billionaire Princess. Right. So they so she can't refer to herself by those names in any capacity that's not WWE related, but she can call herself by her real name. Right. Um, and then um, Exhibit C is... Is the exceptions to the warranty pending contract games. and Yeah. So well, this is basically saying, like, pending contract that both people haven't signed right. yet. So but, that's pretty much what the contract looks like. Woo! Got it done! <laughs> um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I, th I found it very fascinating. <laughs> it was very fascinating. <laughs> um, people are fucking retarded because why would you sign this stupid contract? But if you did enjoy, remember to like the video, subscribe if you're listening. What is going on next week before we do that? Mm -hmm. Next week, um, we're back to our regular format, so we're not going to be doing it live or anything like that. It's going to be pre-recorded everywhere, so nobody's feelings are hurt. And then we're covering Double or Nothing. Um, we're going to do a wrestling lesson. We're going to do be heckling from the heart camera. And um, uh, there was another thing I can't remember. Well, I, think, I think that was the only one next week 
or the week after next will be Dominion and all of that. Stuff. Right. And so uh, we will continue to make pro wrestling majestic again. This oh, yeah. is was not a majestic contract to read. I am voiced out. You are voiced but out. But if you liked it, please do subscribe. And as always, be majestic.